For a long time, OLL parody has cast a shadow on 4x4 speed solving, but times are rapidly changing. I recently used OPA with ARP tracing for the first time in official solves and was able to play second at both the North American Championship and the European Championship. This video covers how the method works and why you should use it too. To keep it shorter, additional example solves are in a separate video linked at the top of the description. I highly recommend watching them to gain insight into how I use the method. OLL parity is determined by the number of inner slice moves applied to the cube. Outer turns do not affect parity. To avoid parity, you must leave the cube with an even number of inner slice moves. OPA has two parts, tracing and solving. Tracing is done during inspection to determine if the cube is in an even or odd state, while solving is done during the first part of the solve to guarantee no parity. I currently know three tracing methods, four blind tracing, and or on a phrase method, and ARP tracing, short for avoiding random parity. ARP was greatly inspired by Anwar's method, and I would not be making this video without him. A link to his original post is in the description. They use similar theories, but I have made it easier to understand and better optimized for speed solving. In order to trace, you need to know whether any given wing is oriented. An oriented wing is called a good wing, and a misoriented wing is called a bad wing. All good wings can be solved using only R, U, L, and D moves. I use the orientation with white on top and green on front, but you can use any orientation you want. To make recognition faster, if a wing has a U or D color on it, that side of the piece is good. If the wing doesn't have the U or D color, then the side with the F or B color is good. Using this information, if the good side is anywhere on the U or D faces, front right, front left, back left, or back right, then the wing is good. If not, the wing is bad. For example, this wing, white and blue, is good because the good side, the white side, is on the upper face. This wing, red and green, is bad because the good side, the green, is not on the upper face, that's on the side. This wing, orange and yellow, is bad because the good side, yellow, is on the side and is not on the back right. This wing, blue and red is good because the good side is on the back right. The main idea of tracing is that you'll go through every wing on the cube, counting orientation as you go, until you end up with a number at the end. This final number tells you if the cube is in an even or odd state. After choosing a starting wing, find its matching wing and add 1 if the matching wing is good. If the matching wing is bad, do not add anything. Then, take the wing at that spot and find its matching wing in the same way. Continue doing this until it returns to your starting wing. This is called a cycle. Each scramble will typically include between one and three cycles. For each individual cycle, including the first, you must add one. Additionally, for any solved edges on the cube, add one if the edge is bad and add nothing if it is good. Starting at this wing, we add one because there's a new cycle, then the red and blue traces to its corresponding wing here. This is a good wing, so our number becomes two. Next, the white and green wing traces here. This is bad, misoriented, so it remains at two. Next, the blue and yellow traces to here. This is good, so we add one. Our number is now three. Next, the white and orange traces to here. This is bad, so our number remains at three. The white and blue traces back here. This is good, so we now have four. This one traces to here. This is good, so we have five. The red and white traces here. It's bad, so it's still at five. 
the blue and orange traces here. This is bad, so it's still at five. The green and orange traces here. It's good, so it's now six. Orange and yellow goes here. That's good, and that, that makes our number seven. That is the entire cycle, and there are no more unsolved edges anywhere on the cube. However, we do have these two solved edges. This one is oriented, so we do not do anything. However, this edge is misoriented, a bad edge, so we have to add one to our final number, which makes our final number eight, which means the cube is in an even state. Once you know whether the cube is in an even or odd state, you can start solving. When two adjacent centers are solved, the parity state of the cube is locked in. If you're using Yao, you must keep track of the cube state through the first two centers, first three edges, and third center. Every inner slice move will flip the state from odd to even, or from even to odd. However, doing a double move will not change the state. This works because doing two inner slice moves cancel out each other's effect. Using this logic, trigger moves such as ry u2 ry prime and ry u prime ry prime don't affect the state of the cube. From here, knowing that the cube is odd, we can solve the yellow center using one inner slice move, which changes it to even. Next, we can solve a white bar on top using a trigger. One, two, that doesn't change it. This white and orange is pretty easy. That doesn't change it. Next, we can solve the second white bar using a double move. One, two, that does not change our parity state. Uh, next, we can insert this bar using a trigger, one, two. This green and white is two moves away from being paired up. And since we'll use one inner slice move, it's gonna change our parity state to odd. Next, we can solve this one pretty easily. And now we have to solve our first center using an odd number of inner slice moves. This green one is pretty easy. We just pair it up with trigger. And then we can do one move to leave the cube in an even state. And now we will not get parity. If, for example, you got here and it was even, instead, you could pair up the green like you did before, and then insert this green bar here using a trigger. So one, two, and that would leave it at even. But since we have odd, we want to insert it with an odd number. In order to trace during inspection in under 15 seconds, it helps to make some optimizations. To make look ahead easier, you can do the first cycle slightly differently. Instead of adding one to start the cycle, check the orientation of the top left wing, adding one if it's bad and adding nothing if it's good. Then, Trace with the other wing from there normally. When you return to your starting wing, don't check the orientation. For example, starting by checking the orientation of the top left wing, green and red, it is good, which means we start at zero. Next, we trace with the other wing, blue and orange, that goes down here. Since it is bad, our number remains at zero. Red and yellow goes here. This is bad, so our number is still zero. Yellow and blue goes down here. This is good, so our number is now one. Blue and red goes here. This is good, so our number is now two. Green and red comes back here, but since we did our first cycle differently, we do not check the orientation of this wing. Now we have a cycle break because there are still some unsolved edges left on the cube. So we can pick any wing we want. For example, this white and orange. We add one because we're starting a new cycle. So our number is now three. Next, this wing traces back here. And since it is bad, our number remains at three. Next, green and orange goes here. This is bad, it's still three. White and blue goes here. This is good, so our number is now four. Yellow and orange goes here. It is good, so our number is now five. 
white and green goes down here. That is now six because it's good. White and red goes here. It's bad, so our number is still six. Yellow and green goes here. This is bad, so our number is still six. And since we have now cycled through every edge on the cube, our file number is six, which means our cube is in an even state of parity. You can then add in an X2 rotation right after looking at your starting wing. Once you get used to this, you never have to check the back edge of the cube for the next wing. Additionally, you can start looking for your first wing while doing the X2. These techniques can help lower your tracing speed to sub-15, but practice is the best way of improving. For tracing practice, there is a great OPA trainer made by Ulrich Bredund and Einar van Lundberg linked in the description. Starting with tracing, we check the orientation of this wing, the white and orange. Since this is oriented, we start at zero. Next, we can look for the yellow and orange wing, and we rotate. The yellow and orange is here. This is a good edge, which means we add one, and number is now one. The yellow and green goes here. That makes it two. Blue and red goes here. That's good, makes it three. White and red goes here. That's bad, which means it remains at three. And since the white and orange goes all the way back here, and we did our first cycle differently, we ignore it and start our second cycle. For the second cycle, we can pick any unsolved edge. Let's just do this one, because it's right here. Starting adding one, since it's a new cycle, we go four. Green and white then goes back here. It's bad, so it stays at four. White and blue goes here. That makes it five because it's good. Green and red down here, that's six, because it's good. Yellow and red goes here, that's bad, it stays at six. Blue and orange goes here, it becomes seven, because that's a good edge. And this one comes back here, and it's bad, which means we stay at seven. We also have this unsolved edge here, since it is a bad edge, we have to add one, which makes it eight. Now we can do our solve. And since our final number is eight, that means the cube is in an even state. Okay. Uh, we can solve our yellow center and one bar of the white center using two inner slice moves, which will leave it in an even state. So we go one, adjust these, two, now it's in an even state, because we did a double move. Next, we do one move to make it odd. This is a trigger move, so it doesn't change. One, two. Next, we can do this white-red edge using one inner slice move, which makes it even. This blue and white can be solved using one, makes it odd. And this white and green can be solved using a double move, so it doesn't change. One, two. So now we have an odd state going into our third center. And in this case, if we had even, it would be really easy to just do that. But since it's odd, we have to move it over here, do one move to make it even, and then do our double move. And now, since it's an even state, we will not get parity. I definitely think it is. After I switched, my global average at home dropped by an entire second. In official solves, this is my success rate so far. With enough practice, OPA becomes so natural that not using it feels wrong. If you are a top 4x4 solver or looking to be one, I think OPA is absolutely necessary. Regardless of your speed though, it makes solving 4x4 more fun. OLL parity is typically the main reason people don't enjoy the event. Without it, Yao is incredibly fun.